Good morning, Christian Church in the Wildwood. I am just happy to be with you together today. Uh, although we're not here in person, we're online, and I'm just uh, honored to be part of this service today and just bringing God's Word to you. That last song we just sung, Waymaker. One of the verses I really like in there, it says, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Isn't that so true of our God? He's always working in us, and he never stops working. That's a great promise. You know who else this song reminds me of? My mother. You know, moms, they never stop working either. And uh, we want to wish you, all you moms a happy Mother's Day today. One of the things I did in preparation for the sermon is I kind of looked at some of the things that mothers do and I found kind of a neat thing online and I want to read some of that to you. It's kind of jobs that moms do. And the first one they had listed was moms are a nurse. They're the professional boo-hoo fixer, the scrape soother, the magical bruise healer. Moms could also be referred to as a cleaning service, the toy putter awayer the constant crumb vacuumer, tornado fixer, face wiper, and even dishwasher. There are also chefs, there are gourmet cooks, waitress, snack maker, walking Pinterest board maker. How about a referee, fight breaker upper, mediator, tantrum tamer. There are also personal assistants, they're making an appointments for the kids and play date scheduler and event planner and task manager. Also a chauffeur, the seat buckler, the car seat installer, and the car DJ. How about a wet nurse, the feeder from our bodies, the makers of milk, the pumpers of liquid gold. They're great investigators, finder of all the missing things, the questioner when there's a fight. They get to examine the poop and the phlegm, all those fun things. How about the multitasker? They cook, they entertain, they enforce the rules. They're the life coach, often all at one time. The chief Instagrammer, a.k.a. photographer, social media manager, selfie teacher. They can be a dental hygienist. Brusher of the teeth, toothpaste putter on her, schedule of the actual dentist appointments. Most moms are bargain hunters, finder of the deals, save the money. They're also called on to be an encyclopedia. The answers to all the whys in the world, all the hows and all the wheres and the whos and whats. They're kind of like a laundry service the stain slayer, the fast folder, the washing wizard, transportation service, the carrier of the children, human maker, the personal piggybacker, the human jungle gym. How about the pet caregiver, the dog walker, the litter box cleaner, the fish feeder? Moms do a lot for us, don't they? Normally today, I would ask all the mothers to stand up so that we could honor them as a congregation. And we're doing this online today, so I know it's quite a bit differently, but I'd like to honor mothers the same way today. I'd ask the mothers to stand up. And kids and fathers, if you're home with them, clap with them, clap for them. But I'm also going to ask all you that are online right now, there's an emoji, and it's a clap emoji. And as mothers, as you stand up right now, I'd like to ask our congregation to clap for them. Use the emojis. Thank you, mothers. Thank you for being who you are. Let's, let's clap for them, folks. We thank you, moms, for being our moms. You're awesome. We love you. We have a video right now that we'd like to show you that we, we, we recorded earlier uh, this week. Amazing. Happy. Joyful. Um, nice. 
Daddy. Love him. <laughs> she loves me with all her heart. Beautiful. The best. Um, it would probably be helpful. A good cook. Happy. Kelly. When I get to snuggle Lily. Well, Sam, uh, we usually go to Universal. She spends time with me, all that stuff. She gives me kisses. She gives me a kiss before she even needs to work. When she's off, she, when she's off, she bees with me. She can care of us. That she snuggles us because we're a family and we love each other. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Love you. I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mommy. <laughs> I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I love you, Mommy. You're pretty and beautiful. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. We love you, love you Mom. Mom. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you so much for everything you do for me. I love you. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful moms out there, especially to my mom. Thank you for always loving me and supporting me. Hi, Mom. I love you. Thank you for always being there for me no matter what. Hey, Mom and uh, Aunt Becky. This is me and Corey just saying we love you and uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our CCW moms. We love you and are thanking God for you today. God bless. Have a great Mother's Day. Think about this. Moms serve us naturally. They are so good at serving us and they love doing it. Moms love being moms. It completes them. It's their whole life for such a long time of their life. And even when the kids grow up, they're still moms. They love serving their families. But we all love to serve, don't we? If you think about it, just for a second, how good do you feel when you do something good for someone else or you help someone else? I don't know about you, but when I serve others, that's when I feel the best about myself. I feel like I've done something of value, something of worth. Here a few months ago, my wife and I got involved with a prayer ministry team. And one of the ideas the team came up with is during this coronavirus, we thought, wouldn't it be great if we would call all you folks? And we did. And uh, I heard from a lot of you that you really appreciated that. You were excited about that and what it meant to you. But at what it meant to the prayer team, I think is amazing. And it's, even though what you appreciated us, the prayer team appreciated you more. They appreciated serving you. You should have seen some of the attitudes and the thought processes about calling. They just loved calling you. They, they got so much joy in doing it and being part of it. And they, they couldn't thank us enough for the opportunity to serve you. They loved doing it. We called trying to, to meet needs and you ended up meeting our needs because our people, the prayer team, was so excited to serve you and it met a need for them as well. It doesn't take you too long if you come into a Christian church in the Wildwood and you see our door greeters, our Cindy Bestmans and Jan Summers who are hugging you. And you can talk to them and they'll tell you how much they get out of welcoming you and loving on you. 
If you talk to the cafe team, they'll tell you the same. They love to serve you. They feel complete. They love doing it. The praise team that we just got done hearing, each and every one of those people, if you talk to them, they'll say they love ushering us in the presence of God through music. They love using their gifts to bring honor and glory to God, and they feel complete and so much better when they do it. Why is it, do you think, we feel the best that way? Why is it when we serve others, we feel the best about ourselves? And I would tell you it's because we get it honestly. And if you haven't heard that term before, it's basically we get it naturally. That's right, we get the desire to serve others Naturally, we get it from our Father, our Heavenly Father. Let me read to you what the message says, which is a, it's a paraphrase, maybe not more a translation, it's a paraphrase, but I like the way it words things today. So I'm going to be reading a lot out of the message today. So if, you, if, you're, if you're looking at your Bibles, you can actually find that on the YouVersion app. Um, it's called The Message, it's MSG. God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature. That's an interesting word, let them reflect our nature. And I believe God's nature is loving and serving. That's what he's done. So they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, under case G, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds of the air for every little thing that moves on the face of the earth. That's Genesis 1, 26-28. See, when we come to faith and are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, spiritual gifts. Paul speaks of these gifts in Romans 12, 6, and 8. Which is our key verse for this sermon. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then a prophesy according to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. It is, if it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Paul goes on in, in 1 Corinthians 12, and tells us that all believers are part of the body. All of us baptized believers are part of this body here at Christian Church in the Wildwood. And Paul says, every one of you is important. We need every part of the body to be engaged with the church. That's right, we need you. If you're not using your gifts here at Christian Church in the Wildwood, then you're not complete. And therefore, the body is lacking what you bring to it. Not too long ago, I was reading a book, and it was interesting how the author put this. But he basically said if the church was all working together in selfless service and loving each other like we've been called to love, it would be so attractive to the world, the world could not stand not being part of it. They would want to be part of it of that body because they would see the church acting in that loving atmosphere and serving one another and serving the world. And they'd want to be part of that. People want to serve. There's a natural desire to feel a purpose. If you don't know what your spiritual gifts are today, we'd love you to help figure that out for you. You can go online after the sermon to ccw.church. You can click on the link that says next steps and there you will find a spiritual gifting survey. You can fill it out. It takes a few minutes, but
but it'll actually help you realize what your giftings are. Please do this. It's incredibly enlightening. It's awesome to see how God has designed you to serve in his kingdom. And it'll help you connect and find your purpose. Think about this. You weren't designed just to be born, to go to school, to get a job, have a family and live 70, 80, 90 years. Were you? Is that what this whole life's about? Living, dying? Is that it? There has to be more, isn't there? And there is. It's not about your job. It's not about your money or your cars or your house or your boats. <laughs> All that stuff doesn't matter. I've done quite a few funerals lately and it's interesting to see what matters. What matters to these people are their friends and family when they're on their deathbeds. That's what matters. That's what they want to hear. That's what they, they want to see. They want to see their friends and family. It's all about relationships. And God knows that. My friends, God has a purpose for your life. And that is that you'll bring Him honor and glory by serving Him and others. And the quicker you find out your purpose, the faster you'll be content with who you are. It makes all the difference in the world. When you feel purpose, that's when life gets exciting. And when your purpose is to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, there's nothing better than feeling like you're doing that. We were designed in God's image and reflecting His nature. What is His nature? Well, let's read that for ourselves. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside. And help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but did not think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death. And the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Can you imagine that? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God of this earth came down here to serve you and me. He loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice on the cross to die for you and me. He could have done whatever he wanted. He could have said, you guys are crazy and he could have smote them all down. But no, he died an obedient death, selfless service. He served us. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever, so that all created beings in heaven and on our earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow and worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. What I'm getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I am separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy 
That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God himself willing and working at what we will, what will give him the most pleasure. It's about God's glory. Your serving glorifies God. Do everything readily and cheerfully, no bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out into the world uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in a squalid and polluted society. Providing people with a glimpse of good living and of living and of the living God. Carry the light giving message into the night so I'll have a good cause to be proud of you on the day that Christ returns. You will be a living proof that I did not go to all this work for nothing. That's Paul talking in Philippians 2, 1 through 16. God has designed us to serve. Our serving will glorify him. That's our purpose, folks. Our purpose here in life is to love God, love others, and we will serve him through that. In closing, Jesus tells us the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Folks, he then goes on to say the second greatest commandment is to love others like we love ourselves. If we love God, our love will extend. It will extend to others, and we will serve God by serving others. In the very near future, we will be coming together again here at CCW, at Christian Church in the Wildwood. And we will, when we do so, we will have all kinds of places for you to serve. Will you please take the time today to fill out the spiritual gifting test online? Go to ccw.church. Go to the next step area and fill that out. And then get with myself or Josh or our next step team and find a place to serve. We would love to get you connected. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we were made in your image and we know how much you have served us. And with grateful hearts and attitudes, Lord, we want to serve you. Prick our hearts today, Lord, and direct us in the way you want us to serve. And allow us to do so in a way that will bring you honor and glory. For we exist for that purpose. It is in your wonderful and glorious name we pray. Amen.